Hello friends, welcome back to the DeClerc Homestead. I'm sitting out in my greenhouse because it's quiet out here. I wanted to have a little chat about homesteading on smaller acreage. If you don't know our history, our first property that we ever bought when we first moved out of the city was almost 40 acres. And we were there a few years, but our current property is only five acres. And even though it's only five acres, we've been able to produce probably 90%, I would say, of our meat, 50 to 60% of our vegetables conservatively, as well as all of our milk, all of our eggs, and a lot of other non-food-based products as well, such as our compost. And when I share those numbers, a lot of people are kind of shocked that we're able to produce so much from such a small footprint. And I will often get a lot of people that assume we are just like one complete bare patch of a property, which if you follow is far from the truth. And though I'm not saying I wouldn't want to expand to more acreage again someday, what I've come to really realize is that there are a lot of benefits to having smaller property. So if you are sitting on a piece of acreage that's maybe only one to five acres and you feel like you have no way you could possibly fit in everything that you dream of doing homestead wise. I hope this video is an encouragement to you. I hope it gives you a chance to kind of look at the positives and look at the strengths of your properties versus the weaknesses. So that way you can be even more productive with your space that you have. Okay, so benefit of small acreage number one, it forces efficiency. When you have limited space to work with and lots to accomplish, you will find use of every little nook and cranny that you have. It may not seem like a big deal to have the garden shed 15 or 20 feet away from your garden, but by having it right directly next to your growing space, you're saving time not only in the traveling back and forth to the structure, but also in the management of that dead space that buffers the two of them. Which leads to benefit number two of smaller acreage. It's much, much easier to manage less space. Our original homestead property had the most picturesque driveway that kind of wound through the woods to the house that was kind of on the back portion of the property. And it was absolutely lovely, don't get me wrong. However, it was about an eight hour job just to mow this tiny, you know, five or six foot strip of grass that was between the fence line and the driveway leading back before it hit the woods. So that was an entire day's worth of work every other weekend during the summer months just to manage that plot. And yes, we ran chicken tractors on there and we tried to manage it other ways, but ultimately it had to be mowed so that it didn't creep into other things on either side of it. But that was a lot of labor for not producing anything. When you have less to manage, the time that you do have can be used towards production-based things versus just general maintenance things. The next benefit to small acreage is that everything is closer together. The accessibility is so much more convenient. Your water lines, your power sources, your storage, it's all within the vicinity of where you need it or where you could easily run hoses or power cords. Running those types of systems to all of the depths of larger properties can be super, super expensive, but not having those things where you need it is really, really frustrating, which leads to benefit number four of smaller acreage, which is it's more affordable. It's more affordable, most likely in the upfront cost to either buy or rent that property because obviously you would think less acreage would be a lower price but it's also more affordable for things that you wanna do there. You'll have less fencing to buy, less utilities to put in. All of your expenses are much more affordable. The last big benefit that we have found to homesteading on smaller acreage is that it really forces you to be intentional and prioritize what you are going to be doing. Just like with the efficiency aspect, if you have more space to spread things out, a lot of times you do it just to fill the space. And if you have lots and lots of acres of pasture, I have seen where people will add animals just for the sake of adding them. But of course, even though you add an animal that you have 
you know, adequate space for, you're still taking away from something else you could be doing with that time, with that money, with that space. Think of it kind of like your closet. If you have a really wonderful walk-in six by six foot closet, of course you can fit all of the clothes that you need to in there, but you're probably gonna fill it to the brim with a bunch of other crap too that you don't necessarily need, but there's space for it, so why not put it in there? Versus if you have a small four foot long pole and that is all you have to hang your clothing on, you're gonna be constantly forced to be purging and to prioritizing what you keep in that space versus filling it just for the sake of getting it filled. I am not saying that we don't need and love our big, beautiful barn, but this is like a prime example of it, of having all of this space that a lot of people would dream of having and like 99% of it is filled with just junk. I just wanna take a quick break from today's video to talk to you guys about how we are getting ready for this very, what seems like an early spring here on the homestead. Of course, there's lots of things that you have to get together as you begin to work outside, as the weather warms up. And one of the things that always sneaks up on me is my need for new boots. It seems like everybody's boots either aren't the right size or they just aren't keeping their feet dry anymore. So super excited to be partnering with Hysia to make sure that everyone in our family is properly prepared to be out in the spring-like muddy weather. Anybody that I talk to that buys Hysia's boots says the same thing. It's that they are so incredibly comfortable. I am somebody who doesn't really like to wear shoes in general. I would be barefoot all the time, but obviously there's certain scenarios where it's better to have footwear on. So having something that is not only super comfortable, but also really, really affordable compared to other farm type boots is important when you have a lot of people and a lot of feet to get boots for. So I highly recommend you checking out their new line that they have for spring. And don't forget that you can get an additional 15% off anything on their website if you use the discount code HOMESTEAD when you check out. They have so many different styles, so many different color options, depending on if you wanna be fun and get something you know, green or pink or yellow, or if you just want to be neutral. So that way it, you know, matches whatever outfit. And they also have their 100 year limited warranty on any pair that you buy. So I'll put a link in the description to this video. Otherwise, let us get back to home study things. Now, there are some challenges, of course, that having a small property gives that aren't necessarily things that you don't deal with on a bigger property, but they're just amplified with less space. Things like not ideal landscape or waste management or being sustainable with your feeding options, not having enough space for the infrastructure you need, etc. This video is actually just the tip of an iceberg of a talk that I'm going to be giving for an online homesteading conference later on this spring. It is the Women Who Prep Conference. It's awesome. There's over 15 different people talking about all different types of topics in the realm of homesteading and preparedness. And I'm really honored to be included in giving an in-depth talk all about raising meat on small acreage, both kind of the logistics of doing it, how to make it laid out, but also calculating what you would need for your yearly needs, for your family, and how to get that done in an efficient or in a productive way when you have limited space. If you want more information about this conference, I'll put a link in the description of this video. And if you have any other ideas or things that you love about your small acreage that I missed, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.